Welcome back everyone. We are talking about investigating food product method of production claims in Canada today. We've been on an adventure in labeling over the past few weeks and have been investigating the uh, guide to food labeling for industry going through each of the different sections at a really high level and I keep encouraging people to go in and read the guide to food labeling for industry but uh, today we're going to be thinking about method of production claim and you're, you're likely scratching your head what does this mean well it will kind of be evident because uh, if you've been eating food in Canada you likely encounter method of production claims every single time you eat they're pretty common and so we're going to walk through what is uh, required to substantiate these claims so we'll understand the types of method of production claims permitted in Canada we'll define the burden of evidence required for justifying method of production claims We'll review the use of visual marks with implied health claims. For example, little heart pictures um, is one example of a visual mark with implied health claim. And we'll, of course, review the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry for further interpretation. Because again, there's so much good information in the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry. And I always remind people that the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry is a, is a fluid document. There are times when the content changes, and so you want to get used to working back finding the resources fresh every time to make sure that you have the most up-to-date information. So get used to going to the website and in a, in a couple of moments we will go to the website together and look for some of this information. So just a reminder because I, I, I know that the students at Niagara College are sick and tired of me saying these statements but they're so important and they're so true to food industry. So first off, you can't, uh, no person shall advertise any food, drug, cosmetic, or device to the general public as a treatment, preventive, or cure for any of the diseases, disorders, or abnormal physical states. And again, when we're working with food products, it's so frequent that small businesses, large businesses, all businesses want to be able to make health-oriented claims or nutrition-oriented claims. And in Canada, we have very strict guidance on how you can and can't do that. And so you have to be very particular about what you can and can't say, especially when it relates to disease. The other piece of the puzzle is from the Food and Drugs Act, Section 5, no person shall label, package, treat, process, sell, or advertise any food in a manner that is false, misleading, or deceptive, or is likely to create an erroneous impression regarding its character, value, quantity, composition, merit, or safety. And so, again, that implies that if you are making a statement about that food product, it has to be true. You cannot be misleading the public about what you are saying on your product. And that relates back to the packaging. It also relates to how you are advertising or representing your product in online forums or through radio advertising or um, on blogs or websites that your company is producing. So just some examples of different method of production claims. We've got up here, we've got a halal symbol, and this is not uncommon on food packages in Canada. And this one in the center comes from the Cash Youth Council of Canada, and it is a Hesher mark indicating that the product is uh, kosher, and it is in this case it's uh, kosher parav, meaning that there's no... Um, meat products or dairy products within that product within the product. This one is uh, uh, a veggie cert, which is a third party certification. It's actually run by the Cash Youth Council, but it's it's a certification for um, vegetarian and vegan foods. Down here, we've got the non GMO project, and that implies that they have done a third party audit to ensure that there is no um, genetically modified foods within that product. How about Foodland Ontario, implying that it is a product that has been produced in Ontario? Or over here in the right-hand corner, we've got the Whole Grains Council stamp, indicating that uh, in this case, 50% or more of the grain in the product is whole grain. Well, these are certain um, method of production claims that are common, and these are the, the trademarked graphics that accompany those method of production claims. Now, why, why do we care about this? Well, I'm bringing up some older 
method of production claims that and this in this case the heart and stroke foundation health check program was a method of production claim along with uh, third party certification and a trademarked graphic that you could have on food products now they they had it on both consumer packaged goods products that you would buy at the grocery store as well as food service items and a lot of a lot of investigation said well wait a second this is more a pay to play type um, certification rather than something that is indeed going to improve your cardiovascular health. And so uh, there was a lot of cynicism where you would see the health check uh, logo on products. Um, this is an example, health check certified menu at Harvey's, which is a fast food outlet. And one could argue is, is any fast food, in, even including a veggie burger, necessarily a good uh, diet choice. Um, the amount of sodium, for example, was extremely high in this product and the amount of uh, saturated fat reasonably high as well. And as such, would this really justify as a heart health friendly product? So uh, some of these, some of these, and I have another example here, non-GMO projects verified salt. Well, salt, how on earth is salt a genetically modified organism? Uh, the, I want to say the, the, in some cases, the verity behind or the truthfulness behind the use of some of these claims has been questioned. Uh, quite often you will see food recalls and it actually is in the Food and Drugs Act and regulation that the misuse of the halal or uh, kosher certifications is, it's actually within the law itself that you can't, it, most of the time, if you're abusing the use of these sorts of uh, certifications, it is, it is uh, prosecuted under the Food and Drugs Act, uh, Section 5, the one that I quote you every single time. But in the case of uh, kosher and hall in particular, there is a section right within the Food and Drugs uh, Regulation indicating that you have to have religious supervision for those products. Um, Method of production claims also relates back to certain claims that are very common on meat products. So, for example, grain-fed or antibiotic-free, these are method of production claims. And these are becoming very common both, uh, both on food packages as well as within advertising. You may have seen on television certain um, hamburger chains out there saying... Uh, free from antibiotics or or so on uh, in their television advertising campaigns. And, and I have to reiterate that these claims are not just for the packaging. It is also for the marketing and advertising that could be on other forums. It just happens that most food product developers interface with the packaging the most. But as the food product developer, you are often creating that positioning and the pitch and the messaging behind the product that you are creating and that can be carried over into marketing campaigns as well. So you do need to be uh, particular about how that's done. Oh, homemade is one of those. And you're likely saying, wait a second, aren't I a manufacturing facility? Well, yeah, um, the uh, concepts of homemade or artisanal or created from a uh, centuries-old recipe, these are statements that are method of production claims. Kosher, GMO-free, halal, vegetarian or vegan. I know we mentioned vegetarian or vegan in... Um, composition claims, but it could also be a method of production. Organic often is pooled in with method of production claims too. And um, I'll mention briefly about the uh, requirements for organic labeling in when we jump over to the guide to food labeling for industry. Now, in terms of any of these claim substantiations, you have to be able to prove that you have had a third party audit. So that means one of these organizations, let's say you're doing kosher, you would have to have the kosher organization come out and do an audit with you they would go through your documentation through your operating procedures through your uh, purchase orders through your um, batch records through your product release records to identify that your products do comply with kosher processing requirements or likewise um, in the case of those whole grain or non-gmo um, certifications it's very similar. They would come through and they would ask an interview and uh, do desk audits and or site specific audits to investigate if you are, uh, I, I don't know, substituting processed grains for whole grains when you say it's a whole grain product. 
So a third party audit implies that you are paying for a third, uh, a second or a another organization to come in and investigate and provide that certification for you. You can do it through valid documentation. And so um, in some cases, for example, with kosher, you do, you do require that third party audit. You can't just go out there and say, well, I don't have pork in my hot dogs, therefore they must be kosher. Um, but in some cases, valid documentation is all that suffice. So in the case of, for example, grain fed chicken, if you want to make that method of production claim, there's no certifying body out there that says, yeah, we go out and check to see if your, your chickens were eating grain today or if they were eating food processing waste. Um, and so in some cases, valid documentation is just sufficient. And so what you're doing is third, uh, you are doing supplier verification. In particular, you're calling up whoever is supplying your product to you and making sure that they can justify what you are doing. And uh, supplier verification is its own whole area of study. And I believe those of you who are at Niagara College will likely do lots of supplier verification with Savvy. Um, and then there are non-government uh, certification programs that are out there. And that could include those third-party audit groups. But in some other cases, they are just guidance where they, they set up a code of conduct. And your organization has to fulfill that code of conduct. But there's no audit procedure and then you were complying by making sure that you have that valid documentation in place. Now, in some cases, there are third party endorsement scenarios where um, if by having that that symbol or that third party mentioned on your product, you have to make sure that if you're using what's called a third party endorsement, that you're not giving uh, by use of your third-party endorsement. So let's say you've got that, that uh, I don't know, whole grain stamp on there, that you are not somehow implying that your brand is healthier than the products that do not have the brand on it. So you have to be really particular. You can't be out there using the brands as a bragging point, but you can use it as a, as a mark of a mark of quality and production methodology. You, so you can't give any impression that the food is a treatment or prevention of disease. You have to have clear information available on what the campaign standard means. So you can't just go out and randomly invent um, magic symbols uh, to stick on your product and, and use, um, I don't know, vague terminology to imply that you've got a new certification. It has to be absolutely clear to the reader, clear to a consumer when they're seeing that seeing that um, information that they know exactly what that means. And anytime you're using some sort of uh, third party endorsement that you need to make sure that the, the endorsement aligns with eating behaviors that comply or uh, are relative to Canada's food guide and dietary guidelines. So for example, we wouldn't see third party endorsement for, I don't know, um, let's say the, the sugar the sugar board out there saying this is a product that's full of sugar because Canada's food guide is saying reduce the amount of sugar that uh, you're consuming on a daily basis. So let's jump out to the guide to food labeling for industry and walk through some of the examples for these method of production claims. So again, I always joke we are friends and I'm not going to edit. Uh, <laughs> the amount of time I spend editing is is getting quite heavy and I want to put out more videos and spend less time on micro editing because again, we are friends and I trust that you're getting the information you need. So food labeling for industry, we've got uh, the industry labeling tool. We've covered off a lot of these core uh, labeling requirements and we're down in the claims and statements section. So we were, we've already covered nutrient content, but let's jump into method of production here. So just some of the high level topics that are in the method of production claims on food labels. So we saw, uh, in, in essence, method of production implies how it's uh, the product was raised, produced, prepared, et cetera. And they are subject to the Food and Drugs Act and Safe Food for Canadians Act. So, oh, there's that false, misleading, deceptive and creating an erroneous impression of the product statement. Uh, and Organic claims and food irradiation claims are in there. Now, I have, in all of my years of working in the Canadian food industry, only very rarely seen food irradiation claims. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but oftentimes you'll see it on industrial spices. Um, but again, you have to have that ability to substantiate your claim. So 
to be able to say something that is uh, natural or nature or or so on, um, it has to not be uh, fortified with uh, vitamins or minerals. It can't have artificial flavorings or food additives. Um, and those food additives would be either from Division 16 of the Food and Drugs Regulation or from the lists of incorporation. You can't have had any major constituent or fraction removed or substantially changed in that product. And it can't be anything that's a maximal process. And we had a different video about maximum processes that changed the character of that food. Now, I, I still find this statement funny because you could have 100 minimum processes, but you can't have one single maximum process. And I think that's, I think that's a little bit funny. But... Um, there are there are times where you can have uh, nutrients that come from uh, natural sources. Let's say, for example, you wanted to increase the amount of, uh, I don't know, dietary fiber in a in a cookie, and you decided to put flax in that cookie because flax is a natural source of dietary fiber and omega three fatty acids. That that is considered a natural ingredient, and so you can use careful and very selective ways of improving the nutritional quality um, flavors. Now, uh, foods with genetic modification in Canada, these would be in lists of uh, approved, approved organisms and approved products. And so if, if you've got genetically modified foods, it's a voluntary system in Canada and you do not require any statement of, of fact. Kosher and halal, they do have aspects uh, under B01049 uh, of the Food and Drugs Regulation, then um, that is that uh, very legal definition of what can be labeled as a kosher food product, and it does have to go through that third party, um, that third party inspection with mashkia, which are uh, kosher food inspectors to make sure that that food has been de deemed fit for kosher consumption, and there are other there are other ways of expressing if you have something that is a kosher style product without saying that it is kosher. Very sim very similar that uh, indication for halal food products is also legally recognized under the Food and Drugs Regulation. Homemade and artisanal made now again. It implies that if, let's say, for example, homemade was in your trademark and in your, your branding, that's different than saying that a product within the, within the marketing claim is a homemade product. You can say things like it is home style or it is just like homemade, implying that it was made uh, in a similar style from a, a home, uh, home recipe. Jumping down here to things like natural and feed claims or raised without antibiotics or hormones claims. These are also in here. And again, I, rem uh, I remind you that if you're making these sorts of claims, come in and read the information from start to finish. I'm giving you a really, really high level of review. But uh, the feed claims, for example, raised without implies that there are no nutritive uh, feed additives and um, supplemental sources of vitamins and minerals are are. Uh, being watched out for, being fed no bone meal or no uh, feather meal is, uh, all, or being fed no animal byproducts are statements that uh, used to be very important, and I don't see them as frequently. But um, there is, oh, this is an interesting one. Some animal feed is manufactured with bakery and snack food waste that contain that may contain animal products as well as animal byproducts, and if this type of feed is used, the Resulting feed or meat product may not be labeled or advertised with these claims. Food waste is a very common animal feed, and it and it is a really cost-effective way of feeding animals. But at the same time, it is it can uh, negate many of the different claims that are desirable by certain uh, producers. Grain-fed, grain-fed, raised without antibiotics. What else? Raised without the use of added hormones. Method of production claims for fresh fruits and vegetables, so genetic engineering or free of pesticides. Different than organic. We talked about the minimum and maximal processes before. Let's jump back out because I wanted to also show you the sections on pictures and vignettes and 
the idea of using pictures and vignettes is that also if you're using imagery so for example let's say you wanted to make a sports beverage you'd have to watch out for example of having muscular looking people on the package which would imply that eating the product would somehow uh, allow you to increase your muscle capacity use of heart symbols is a really really important one so um, you do have to be accurate in your illustrations and we mentioned this before that if you are if you are um, making fruit juice, for example, and you are using a blend of different fruits, you cannot put pictures of fruits that aren't on there because that's a misrepresentation. There's a whole section on uh, vignettes related to artificial flavors. How about illustrations of peoples? You can't do before and after type pictures where you've got, oh, if you eat this before and you eat this after, this is what you're going to look like. Um, you can't you can't use pictures of scientific laboratories or um, microscopes or syringes or so on because that implies some sort of science or health related impact. Heart symbols, oh, this one's this one's tricky because using a heart symbol uh, could imply that it's healthier for you or it's going to uh, create heart health or improve cardiovascular outcomes. And again, not so much. Um, you can use it, though, as a symbol of affection for Valentine's Day, for candies. And they have said that it can be related to a health organization, local name or program, but that you cannot give an impression that the food is going to prevent or cure a disease and that it uh, meets that third-party endorsement and heart symbols with health claims, you have to go through and have that disease reduction claim or other nutrient content claims specifically. Trademarks, there, uh, we'll have a whole section on trademarks, but you do have to be very particular about uh, any sort of implied claim that could be uh, related out with uh, the use of a trademark image on a product. And if it's not your image within your company, don't use it on a package. Plain and simple. Some symbols, Government of Canada symbols, are actual trademarks. So the use of a Canada flag or the use of a CFIA logo or any um, inspection type marks are also trademarked. And therefore, if you are going about, you cannot fake those, those marks. You have to have appropriate use of inspection leg legends and project legends uh, for any of the different products that require uh, the use of a legend. So for example... On processed meat products there's a little tiny crown that says Canada that is an inspection mark and you can't just go and fake that on your product you have to receive a proper inspection CFIA um, designation and as such then you can use that mark you can't just go and fake it so again also third-party endorsements if you're using any sort of third-party endorsement you have to make sure that that third party has indeed approved that product and that you're not just slapping an image on your product because you think it's you think it's fun um, you have to make sure that you have paid out the appropriate uh, sponsorship to that third party so that you can use their symbols so again jump back to my presentation here take the time to read the guide to food labeling for industry i can't stress this enough it's an important document and it's going to give you a lot more detailed information about some of the different scenarios that you are looking at. And the CFIA does have um, an Ask the CFIA um, chat box that you can connect with CFIA agents. And I've been doing a lot of advocacy with respect to small business and being able to access um, information from the CFIA. And rest assured, I've, I've gotten some phone calls from Ottawa recently saying, we've heard you, uh, we are doing better. We're trying hard to make sure that we are helping small business. And I'm like, yes. Rest assured, I'm out there to help small business, and I really love it when small businesses reach out and ask questions. At the same time, the CFIA is a is a great uh, resource. You can actually see the little chat box, chat box there in the bottom corner. Um, and so make sure to triangulate and make sure to reach out to a wide variety of different organizations, whether that's <coughs> uh, technology access centers, uh, such as the one at Niagara College. Reach out to the CFIA and ask your question. And the more information you gather from really high quality sources, the more you're going to be confident that you're making the right decision about your product. All right, I'm going to leave it there. 
Take care and we will talk to you again real soon.